today is so exciting because I just got a package and I've been waiting for this for ages and I can't wait to look at it and share it with you today. I finally got the Alley Man's Tarot. It was a Kickstarter from last early summer or late spring. It finally shipped and I just got it and we're going to take a first look at it together. Now, if you're not familiar with the Alley Man's Tarot, I was so excited for this because specifically it's a really, really unique deck. I have never seen a deck like this before. First of all, there are more than 78 cards. There are uh, 120-ish cards in the base deck, and then there were booster cards cards that you could add in. And also all the cards are done by different artists from different decks or just um, made for this deck, but from different artists and different styles. And I'm so excited. There's also like multiple death cards, multiple tower cards. We're going to take a look at it. So I hope you enjoy this. We'll, of course, we'll do a full flip through where I give you my little impressions about the cards. This won't be a full review because I want to get this up as soon as I finish this because it's a brand new deck, but I will do a review a few months down the line after I've worked with it for a bit, like I'm doing with the Somnia Tarot and the Pastel Journey Tarot, so that will come down in a few months. Anyway, since this deck is such a big deck, it's probably going to be a lot longer video than usual, so get some snacks and we'll take a look. So first we've got the box. You can see from like the fonts that it's already like a mishmash of styles and I'm so excited. This is the book about the um, deck. Bound in this volume is a copy of the alley man's own thoughts on his deck and the cards included. Try to trim it to just what you need. Good luck with the deck. It's a big one, but hopefully with his words, that'll be enough. So this is what's usually called the little white book. And the box comes apart like this. Ooh, and there's a little coin in it. This was initially a Kickstarter add-on. But I think that I remember the creator saying that he was going to add this into all of the packs just because the deck did get delayed because of COVID shipping and printing and everything. So I think they added in some extra. And it does come with a booster pack, which is also an extra. I'm excited because I didn't get any of the booster packs, so we'll see what that has. We're going to go unwrap this and take a look. Here's the box as I showed already. It slides out and it is pretty empty. I'm assuming it's because they had to make room for all the booster packs. So that's okay. I don't keep my decks in a box and in their box anyway, unless I'm traveling, but I can put this in a little, in a little baggie. And here we have this coin that has a little symbol on each side, a little insignia. I'm not sure exactly what I'm going to do with this coin, but I can imagine that I'm going to use it in some uh, spells or like divination purposes. We'll put that to the side. And here we have the book, which we will take a little look at afterwards. And of course, we've got a booster pack, booster pack number four. Let's take a look at the main deck first. I'm so excited. Even the backs of the cards are all different. They're glossy, which if you've watched my other videos, you know, I'm not a huge fan of because of that ring light. I like them in daily use, but for videos, I'm like, eh, or for stream, I'm like, eh, I don't really love the glossy, but we'll deal with it. So here we go. It's a fool. This is the fool. Huggies. Oh my God. I love it. The magician. The magician. The high priestess. I'm uh, trying to get the golden gilding without getting the reflection too bad of the ring light. Um, but the high priestess, the empress, oh, perfect, perfect, if you will. It's got cats on the back. The emperor. 
I love I love that the back matches. I love it. Very emperor energy for sure. The hero fan. Ooh, so we've got some like classic Rider Waite Smith imagery on here, but different art style. I love this different art style. And we've definitely got like like some religious cross imagery on the back. So this is another hero fant card. So um same color scheme, but clearly different art styles, different messages. This is so interesting for the hero fant. Gonna gonna have to sit with that one for a bit. The lovers. Oh my god, look at this. There's a skeleton in the ground and she's planting or plucking a flower uh, that he's that they've handed to her oh, I love it the chariot this looks like oh what's the deck this looks like the art style of the okay tarot which I love I don't have it but I love the style of that deck so yay I don't know if it is the same person but I love it so I just looked it up and it is from the OK Tarot. See, I can recognize things. Strength. I love this. It feels like those, you know, strength contests from um, old fairs. Okay. So, again, I don't know if some of these cards are out of order on purpose or what. Um, maybe it's these cards at the back. Actually, we'll see. But we've skipped the strength card. So here is the hermit. I love that. It's just one red string. And then it comes around to the back. The wheel of fortune. Justice, balance. It's a fairly, you know, standard imagery for justice, I feel like, you know, the scales and everything. But I love this art style. I love this. This is um amazing. We've got the hanged man with the little cat. Very different from the traditional hanged man, actually, like with the star above. You don't... I have never seen the star included in the hangman, so. And also just a cat. Death. Okay, so this deck has multiple death cards, so I'm excited to see them. So here we've got a pretty, um, like, gothic, as in, you know, like the modern goth movement, not gothic architecture, but pretty gothic style. And <laughs> we've got, I don't know, like a mad doctor. And, uh, some graves. It's definitely, um, more of a, like, not negative connotation of the death card than I normally go for, but it's definitely more, uh, creepy. And here we have another death card. Okay. I love this one. You already know I love this one. Uh, we've got, like, the figure of death as he is, as it is commonly portrayed in media these days. And also just like holding out their hand and just like come with me, but also like sand or ashes spilling through fingers and just an owl like ready to take flight with all the knowledge. I, I love this death card. I love it. So I am actually going to pull out the book for these death cards because each one has like a little different connotation for it, which is one of the reasons I wanted this deck because I love the death card and I love everything that it always has to say. So we're going to take a look at these. This one is Death Stubborn and this one is a Rebirth, which I love the whole concept of rebirth in the death cards. So I definitely get that feeling here. Death Fire. Very much like tower imagery in the background. Here is yet another death card. This really um, reminds me of like cage et cave etchings. It's death blood, the change that hurts. Death motel. 
Stay for a good time, not a long time. Enjoy things while they last. Death dancing. Ooh, I love that. Like, celebrate things ending and changing. This is another death card. This is death riding. So we've got dead people <laughs> underneath, but death ke keeps on going. Death sewing. The book says this is the one most likely to represent literal death. Death shovel. Um, just the end and putting it to rest. Here we have temperance. Oh, this is so interesting because first of all, like the water is coming out of both cups into like make this arch and also like their head is a sun. This is beautiful, beautiful like art that you like it's just outlines, it's just line work and it's so great. I love it. We have the devil. This one says, you bleeding heart chase after your inner fire. Follow your passion. Don't be led astray. It has the knives sticking into the heart of the devil. Another devil card. Very traditional devil. Um, but we have the two figures down here. And then we have this face, which honestly reminds me of the creepy baby face that's on the traditional sun card. So, uh... <laughs> I, I'm automatically making connections to that, so, um, that's exciting. So here we have the first tower card. I love the art on this. I love that, like, there's just this red trace, like, looking like cracks just flowing down and flowing around the door. This is another tower card, the house of God. You know, sometimes we have to give up the truths we hold and sometimes the world makes us give them up and i believe this is another tower card called the horizon you can see like neither one is reversed which i found is really interesting so um i'm gonna have to sit with this i'm gonna have to sit with so many of these i love them the tower has fallen but the horizon is clear and here is the star card i love it you can see um, it's actually purple in the light. I love it. A lot of you know I love the star card. And um, this is just perfect. I love it. I love it so much. It's very simple, but like oh, the purple. Oh, I love it. And here we have the moon. The person we usually see in the moon. Very contemplative, looking down, like maybe judging a little. And then like hands bound together. It has the river, like the traditional imagery. And um, I think, I just think it's like a really good take on the traditional imagery of the moon. But very, very modern. So here is the sun. We skipped the star and the moon. So again, I think when I was flipping through, I did see the star in here in the back. So we'll we'll get there, I guess. But this is the sun. It's a sigil for the sun. It's been, you know, broken down into representation of the sun. I love it. But can we talk about this one? Oh my god, this sun card. This sun card is so cute. I was not expecting like such a cute card in this deck, but this feels like it could fit in my, this could fit in my pastel journey deck. This, this could absolutely fit in there. And I love it. I love it. So here we have judgment. Ooh, this is so, this is so different. Like we've got an image of a bird, but it looks like very like watercolor, everything blended together. And, um, we've got some flames and it's not traditional judgment at all and i love it i don't normally associate the phoenix with judgment but it does make sense but um i think that's what they were going for here with uh with the phoenix but that's so interesting because to me the phoenix is total death energy the world le monde we have a little baby with an hourglass the baby is usually in the world imagery but here we've got an hourglass like Time's a ticking. Here we have the cups suit. So we have the Ace of Cups. 
and the water's flowing in, which is actually perfect for when it's reversed because the water is flowing out. Like, it's complete movement there. We have the Two of Cups. Very standard imagery for Two of Cups. It feels like the lovers all over again. It actually feels like Ryder or Reed Smith. And here we've got the Three of Cups with cats. Oh, you know me, I love all the cats. So we've got some cats partying here. The Four of Cups. Ooh, okay, okay. Um, it looks like a baseball trading card, especially with the font that they use here. But um, it's so it's so interesting. Like, just this is an eye crying into the cup and they're like nope don't want any of that nope the five of cups we've got the three spilled cups and these two are on fire um so interesting i've never seen like the cups on with fire in them aside from maybe the seven of cups that's the only one i've seen sometimes with fire in it but it's very um very interesting the six of cups childhood innocent Joy. Look at how silly that is. Here we have the Seven of Cups, but not traditional imagery. There are no, there's nothing in these cups. There's no choices that you can see that's uh, really interesting. And then when you reverse it, it has different connotation. I love it. Here we have Eight of Cups. Ooh, this feels like it belongs in the Line Strider deck. It's not from the Line Strider. I know it's not, but it's very much like that watercolory art style with just like the blue and the black. This is so interesting for Eight of Cups because like we've got the dark clouds, but like it's coming through the dark clouds. Nine of Cups. Ooh, okay. So so this is this is interesting because like it looks the same reverse and upright. The only way you can tell it's upright is this little mark on the bottom of it when it's upright. But that's so interesting. Nine of cups. And then we have ten of cups that are just rings from uh, people being slappy with their drinks. We've got the rainbow. That's the traditional imagery and I love it. The Le de Coup, which I believe is the page of cups. Um, just carrying one cup, looking at it as he's moving forward very slowly. The Knight of Cups. First of all, a woman, yes, and a horse, double yes. It actually looks like it has wings, Pegasus. I, um, I love it. Like, it's just, it's such a mix of styles here. It doesn't give me the feeling like Knight of Cups normally gives me. Not that that's a bad thing. It's just different. And that's why I got this deck. I'm so excited. The Queen of Cups. Ooh, very beautiful. Very bright colors. We've got like the universe behind her. She's in the water. A beta fish and a manatee. But she's calm. She's collected. Those are smooth waters. Nothing to worry about. And here's the King of Cups sitting on his throne. He has a giant cup and he's not even looking at us. He's like confident enough not to look at us. Body facing this way, head facing that way. Just like, yep, whatever. Ace of Wands. <laughs> My first thought was Sonic Screwdriver. <laughs> It's not, but, like, that was my first thought. And it's definitely, like, a robot holding the wand. It's just, like, holding the wand up triumphantly, ready to um, bring all those ideas in. And you can see, like, they're swirling around the wand. Ooh, look at the back of this, too. I love it. It's apparently from the Tarobo deck. Like, robot, I guess. Tar Tarobot deck. <laughs> We got the two of wands. We've got the spades from, you know, the traditional playing cards. Um, we've got a map like torn in half, like, where are you going? Make a choice. And we've got like a traveler's backpack. You're on your journey. Three of wands, just feathers, um, kind of like they're peacock feathers, just showing off a little, but you know, feathers are important for wings to get you where you want to go. 
Uh, so we've got four of wands, skipping the three of wands. Maybe I should have put these in order before, but we have uh, another like beautiful line art, but unlike the other one, this one's mostly black with white as the line art, and it's just like this little canopy of um, grapes and a little trellis, I suppose, and we've got the people like celebrating down here on the field. We've got the five of wands. Oh no, six of wands. No, five. It's five of wands. Huh. I guess one, two, three, four, five. I was thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, but it's five of wands. It's interesting because the five of wands is usually about clashing and like who's got the biggest stick or something else that rhymes with stick. But this is like they're coming together to make something really pretty. So um, it's mo way more organized than Five of Wands usually is. A six of Wands. Traditional imagery with, you know, <laughs> a different twist. Um, but riding in battle, the, vi the battle of victory, she has the laurel crowns on her head. It's just, you know, the victorious on the horse. Here we have the Seven of Wands. Seven of Wands, you're defending your position and receiving a lot of pushback. But this person is just like, look at that sassy pose. Just sitting there like, oh, yeah, I'm not going to take that. So we have the Eight of Wands. And I like that. First of all, like it looks like it's going up. But also it reminds me of a xylophone. But it's a ladder leading up and there's a fire underneath. But it's warming her. So it's got some of that movement. It doesn't feel as sudden movement as Eight of Wands usually does. Not such swift movement because she's sitting by the fire and warming up. Or they're sitting by the fire and warming up. Here we have the Nine of Wands. This is very different imagery. It's much more calm than I normally feel with the Nine of Wands. Um, Nine of Wands is, to me, always like, you've been juggling so much, but you are about to drop it all. Or you are dropping it all. Um, but this is much more calm. We have a cute little ghosty on the card. Like, what's done is done. It's in the past now. And um, just be calm and move on. And the Ten of Wands. All the wands in the basket. We can carry them. They're nice and secure in here unless you dump it over. And like ten of wands is usually like, can you carry all those sticks here? We've we've figured out how to carry them. And we have the page of wands. I just love this art style. It definitely looks like more historic, not really modern. And I uh, just I just love it. And here we have the Knight of Wands. This is from the Marcel Tarot. It's not a deck I'm actually, you know, familiar with using, but I have seen imagery. This is very traditional imagery for Marcel Tarot, not Rider Waite Smith. And Queen of Wands, oh my god, I love this. I I love this. She's so she's so beautiful and confident and i love that her eyes don't really have uh pupils in them they're just purple but we've got a little spark coming out of the wand i love it and here we have the king of wands instead of there's no figure here it's just a crown with flowers coming out of it so very interesting imagery here I, i'm gonna have to sit with so many of these cards and just like study them and like what do I get from this but this is definitely like to me is like all the all the knowledge all the ideas all the passion and beauty coming out of the crown um, and just like it's already taken form here we have the ace of swords I love this so if you see the shininess of it just this person like holding up this sword but it is just magnified and it's so powerful. And sometimes that's how you feel with Ace of Swords. Like you have this, this idea and you think it's good and you're like standing there like confident, but you don't know how big it's going to be. You don't know the power it's going to have. And so I just love this. This is just so powerful. So here we have the Two of Swords. 
so interesting because it's a guillotine. I don't normally see the Two of Swords as that, um, but it's also interesting because it's a guillotine on both sides and definitely like split in half, but um, kind of the meaning either way that you pull it. Three of Swords. Okay, so we definitely have like the idea of the sword sticking into the heart, but it's not a heart. It is um, just a red face. There's an eye there. Um, well, we definitely, like, that kind of feels like a nose. So it's kind of the heart imagery, but it's also, like, being stabbed in the face. Very bad migraine. We have the Four of Swords, which is so cute. This is just, like, little sleepy heads. I, I can't believe how cute this is. Also, it's interesting because the placement of the swords, it's like kind of the same upside down, except obviously the heads are upside down, but it's kind of the same. Um, so interesting. We have the five of swords clearly sitting there with regret, has a crown, is victorious, but like at what cost? Look at that. At what cost? Six of Swords. Oh my god! Little, like, alien planet. Just, like, looking out. Six of Swords is all about, like, looking at new frontiers and going on a journey. So looking at an alien planet definitely makes sense here. Here we have the Seven of Swords. It's interesting, like, this. <laughs> there's so much space around this figure, but clearly just, like, Making off with these swords, you know, traditional imagery, but they're like, they're laughing about it. They're having a great time. They're like, haha, I can't believe I got away with this. Here we have the Eight of Swords. Definitely more traditional imagery. Um, feeling trapped. I will say, like, it's different that she, her body is facing away from us and she's turning her head, but she's, um, we, we see, like, the hands trapped behind her and everything so a little different twist here we have the nine of swords the nightmare card the anxiety the depression definitely captured in here definitely we have an open window in the back like you can step into the light or and look at the light and maybe it's a door um but like the light is falling all around them but they're still in the dark and here we have the Ten of Swords, scissors instead of actual swords. I love it, um, especially since, you know, I do like a lot of crafting, a lot of sewing, and my scissors are my um, sword energy for my altar there. So here we've definitely got like a lot of red, a lot of um, despair, like this is going right through her head. These are going through her body. Um, just like, yeah, this is, there's no coming back from this one. A page of swords? Oh my god, look at this! Little fish head! Very fantastical imagery. Um, I, I love it. We have a Volkswagen van in the background and a water tower. The artwork and the coloring reminds me of that... <sighs> There's like a children's book about a frog and a toad. I don't remember what it is, <laughs> but it reminds me of that art style. This is the Knight of Swords, another like classical representation. The Knight of Swords is usually just like super forward momentum. Here it's a little calmer, a little calmer, but like still ready to fight if necessary. And just also just like so, just so decorated, I guess. So it's interesting. So we're skipping the Knight of Swords and we have the Queen of Swords. Oh, I can't wait to see the Knight of Swords, actually. But we have the Queen of Swords here. Interestingly, represented by a skull. And um, I feel like queens are not really like that dead energy or dying energy or anything. So, so that's really interesting. But she's sitting there like sword in hand and reading a book. 
And uh, I'm always going to like characters reading a book. Even though she's dead, she's still learning. <laughs> and the King of Swords. This is a very old art style. The book says it's another classic deck that I'm not actually familiar with. The Minciate, you can tell from the art style, either it is classic or it is in the style of the old tarot decks. But we've got uh, the king just like sitting on his throne, looking away. Um, he's got his sword in hand, but not in a raised defending position. And he's just like, yep, I'm the master here. And here's the pentacle suit, starting it off with a very, very colorful ace of pentacles. I love all the colors here. Um, and we've got a bright pink hand and a lion just laying around. And it's like, yeah, um, you gotta, you gotta do your shit. We have two of pentacles. Um, very much just like the infinity sign that we usually see on the traditional decks and just the two pentacles around and just the two pentacles in the middle. Um, very simple imagery at first glance, but I love like all the feathers or um, plant tendrils, whatever they are, all the colors. I love it. Here we have the Three of Pentacles. This is actually from the Rider Waite Smith deck. And uh we just have like, you know, the the two people and the one in charge, but it's a card of teamwork. Also, we didn't take a moment to appreciate the back of this card. Look at this. I love it. But yeah, I don't really have much to say about Rider Waite Smith. Traditional imagery. If you know tarot, you probably know it. Here we have the Four of Pentacles, so Four of Pentacles, and, uh, I don't know, there, like, there isn't, what do you say about the Four of Pentacles? They're right there, like, it's very Pip imagery, but this, this, the Five of Pentacles, Five of Discs. I know it's not from Zelda, but it definitely gives me, like, classic, classic Zelda, like, just, like, it's dangerous to go alone, and that's... Five of five of pentacles, five of discs. You have people who can help you, but you're stubborn and aren't accepting it, and you're going alone. So definitely, I love the imagery. My little nerd heart. Here we have the six of pentacles, six hands, six arms, and the six discs. I love this because, like, look at that, like. Like, that is just, like, a regular leg, you know? Or, well, aside from... It's a mostly regular leg. But this one just turns into um, roots, into rooting into the ground. I love it. And then it turns into a tree, and it's just, like, give to the ground, but give to the air. Here we have the Seven of Pentacles. Very um, simplified imagery, I guess. Like, very, very pip card. Just the seven discs just floating there with a little bit of background. Here we have the eight of pentacles. Very different um, imagery here. Also like dead legs are all hairy. Love it. Eight of pentacles is usually seen as a hard work and repetition card and putting in the work. But the book actually says this is self-care as a card and nurturing your own ambition, which I love that also. So nine of pentacles, nine of discs. There's a lot going on here. They're on the fire so that their um, pentacles don't melt. They're trying to preserve their wealth, but like at what cost? Like sometimes you gotta... Um, you gotta let yourself just, you know, not protect things anymore. This is, like, a much more, um, I guess, negative connotation than I usually see Nine of Pentacles. 
Although I know Nine of Pentacles can be, like, smug bastard and, like, hoarding his wealth. But this is definitely, like, taking it a next step. Like, not just not just being smug and being like, ha, ah, I have all this money, you don't. Um, but, like, literally throwing himself on the fire. So, um, that's interesting. And here we have the Ten of Pentacles, Ten of Discs. It's not very full of imagery, but it gets the point across we have the the um basic shapes and we they're just like filling up the card there is almost no empty space and that's just you know what we want we want the ten of pentacles filling up the coffers we have a page of pentacles this is so cute what deck is this from because i want it okay so the book doesn't say it's from any deck it's just created by an artist for this deck unfortunately because i would love a deck all in this style look at this um so the page of pentacles is just like like you've got you're holding one and you're on your way um but it's still at the very beginning and i love it like a little cute winky face she's like i got this don't worry the knight of pentacles knight of rings Knight of Pentacles is very slow and steady. Since this is represented by a skeleton, it's maybe a warning to not be too slow. But it does have, like, the harvest um, behind him. The, it being a skeleton gives it a different vibe for sure. Here we have the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles is just, like, very nurturing, very... Um, like very homey nurturing, like comfort food and just being, um, being like that nice warm hug rather than the emotional nurturing. And I feel like this is, uh, this is so nice. This is so nice. Like they're sitting down, like comfort food. Um, and just like the smile just says it all. And also like there is like light behind their head and, I just, this is so nice. I, I love it. I love, I love it. Oh, okay. So here's the King of Coins. And this is from the Somnia Tarot. I have this. I have a video of the Somnia Tarot up on my channel. Um, a link is going to be right there. But, um, the King of, King of Coins, King of Pentacles, he's, um, holding onto that. But, like, there's some over here and he's got a whole kingdom. But, like, he's not holding onto it tightly. Like, he's holding it, but, like, he's not holding onto it tightly. And, oh, I'm so, I'm so excited that this is in here. I had no idea. So this is where we would normally end. We just went through all the suits. But if you can tell, we're only halfway through. So there's a new um, suit just made for this deck that we're going to take a look at. I'm going to look at the book while we do this. So this is the Ace of Hounds. The hound is domesticated, but still all teeth and nose, a hunter at its core. I'm so excited to, like, look at these. The two of whips. They're not wands, they're whips. It looks like there's writing, but you can't really read it. This is actually from a Boyardo deck from the Playing Cards and Tarot Museum website. So this is an old, old card. And this is from when a tarot deck was used as a card game. At least more predominantly, you can still use it as a card game. The Three of Books. Okay, okay, I love it, I love it. The Three of Books, teaching your instincts better manners, gaining control over your desires, and applying logic to choice. They're teaching, but like, they're teaching the the animals, so um, how successful is that going to be? And the knowledge is just growing on trees. The Four of Keys, I feel like. This speaks of itself, um, going forward, new doors, unlocking new potential. But we have, like, these keys, and they're actually all the same. They look like the same key. So wherever you're going, you can use whichever one, and you're going to get there. Five of mirrors. Also love this. The mirrors are broken um, a little, which speaks of bad luck. But also just like illusions, not 
always seeing the picture for what it is because we see it reversed. But also sometimes if the mirror is angled in a specific way, you can see things that you normally wouldn't see. Also, I just want to be a cute space girl like this. The six of inking balls. Are we the fool being dunked in the vat of ink or the naked lady making it happen? Very interesting card. Oh, being drowned in your work. Oh, this is so cool. He's like, no, I don't want to. And they're like, you're going in. You're going in. You have no say. The seven of bells. Ooh, look at this figure. Um, creatures of the wood would make you one of them. Being transformed into something you're not. I love it. We've got like a little devil figure down here. So cool. The eight of tentacles. Giving yourself over to absolute pleasure. I like that um, they're actually upside down on the card. So that's, uh, that's interesting. Giving into guilty pleasures. The nine of clocks. The book says, the symbolism isn't that deep. It's just a bunch of clocks at different times. That's all. We all do things in our own time. I like that message. I'm a member of the stream team, the plant army, and one of our phrases is like, grow at your own pace. And we have the 10 of eyes, all these eyes covered over this body. We have just a lone sun up here and just like constantly looking, constantly looking for stuff. So this is the builder. The builder knows not what it builds. It comes to the builder in dreams and it maintains this part of the machine, never knowing the purpose. Ooh. I love it. It's, it goes on to talk about systems in our world, systems of oppression, um, systems that raise people up and it's just, uh, there's so much. This was actually made by the person who put together this deck. The Masterless Knight. It's a wild card to warn you that it's impossible to know this factor. It was the Joker in its original deck. A wild card. Interesting. The Queen of Bombs. We have a hazard symbol. It's very like 50s housewife, but you know, bombs. <laughs> the nuclear wife, the caretaker. The caretaker, but the person you don't want to fuck with or she will destroy you <laughs> if you try to threaten her way of life. This is Father Sleep. Father Sleep knows when things are coming and when things are going. That's an important thing to know about. It comes up when there's something you need to recognize as ending. We have the sun and then the moon behind it. And, uh, and then another little figure here. The fountain, very Ace of Cups energy, very, very Ace of Cups. What fills your cup? Um, taking a nice, long, cool drink, refreshing. Um, and it's also really pretty to look at. There's places to sit on it and you can just relax and uh, just take a breather. Hydrate. So this is the white and black candle. The maker of this deck intended you to put the white and black candles on either side of the deck or reading. It implies ritual. Ritual in the form of things we do in our day to day. The foundations for how we set ourselves up. The Wild Hunt. The Wild Hunt is just a lot of demons going out and catching people up and taking them along for the ride, whether they want to or not. And it's just like, you're one of them now. <laughs> Be cautious about uh, your temptations. Here we have the Joker. Oh, I thought that was a, I thought she was a mermaid at first. It says this is not a card that has a specific meaning. You just need to intuitively read it. Or it also says um, if you cannot read intuitively and prefer specific meanings in every element of your deck, remove this card. That's interesting. I think this is a card that will change based on each individual reading. I'm curious when it will show up. Paimon, king of subjugation. The question here is whether you are the subjugator or the subjugated. More likely, you feel at the controlling whims of another. Giuseppe! <laughs> it looks like it's from a trading card game. It looks like it's from Pokemon or something. Thought this was one of those Pokemans, but I found it was something much better. Giuseppe represents the blooming of possibility in friendship. I love this. I love it. Draw three cards from anywhere. If they don't bring you happiness, put them back and draw three more. Repeat it as many times as you like and share them with others. That's so cute. 
The book also says he doesn't read Giuseppe in reverse. The dark sun. When we focus on the pain and loss we have faced in our lives and do not let go. When we're wallowing. The black moon. I love the um, contrast here. I've been reading a book called Of Blood and Bones, and they talk about working with the dark moon a lot. I don't work with the dark moon, like, at all. I work with the new moon, and I work with the full moon, but I don't work with the dark moon. So, um, I guess let's pull in some of that for this card. The Boogeyman. We're all familiar with the Boogeyman, the tales that we are told as children, don't misbehave or the Boogeyman will come and take you away. Cautionary tale. Not true, <laughs> but uh, it's a card that speaks to like fear and keeping someone in line, I feel like. Fear. Definitely something from... Uh, Nightmares a little. Stories we tell our children to seed anxiety forevermore. Fear is real. So this would be um me watching Candyman when I was far, far too young and then not watching another horror movie for like many, many, many years. And uh that would be that would be this card. The hole. The thing that's missing. The void. I feel like that speaks to itself very well. The hawk moth. The cycle is coming to its end and you're preparing for the next step. But you aren't completely certain where you're going or what you're doing. A cycle of change from uncertainty with hope for a future form. The letter communication. I love this. I love this art on this. Also like the pink background. Yes, me. I love this card. I love this card. Get this? You need to communicate. Also, as someone who like used to have a pen pal and wishes I still had a pen pal, Love it. Wound man. Pain, suffering, and injury. Got a lot of, a lot of things going on here. A lot of things hurting him. The comforter. I love this. Oh my god, look at the little bodies. This is very Queen of Pentacles energy. Very Empress. I, I love it. Also, like, even, like, the color around it is very, like, earth tones and very comforting. The Lone and Level Sands. Ooh, the statue being pretty much covered aside from half the face in the sands. The sands just eventually bury everything because uh, they're always moving with the wind. Nothing lasts forever. Dagas. This card has runes on it. I am just learning runes, so I can't like say what these runes are without actually looking them up. But we have, um, they have the meanings right here. So, thankfully, um, we have, uh, Elder Futhark, um, Dawn, Not Present, Day, Daylight, Day, Awakening, Illumination, Hope. There you go. Oh, it's from a deck of rune cards. Snowflake rune cards. Misery. I feel like um, this kind of speaks for itself. Look at the little dog. He's like, please pay attention to me. This one's like, I'm going to bite your ankles if you don't pay attention to me. And they're just like, I'm so miserable. There's nothing fun in this life. With like a wall crumbling down behind them. Hope. So this is from an actual painting um, at a, a museum. Being in the thick of it, but still holding on that there is hope to come. There are good things to come. Weird ass mystical shit. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I love it so much. Oh, just like, do some weird ass mystical shit. Not everything is meant to be known to you. And uh, sometimes things are the tradition. We've got a lot of different, like, religious imagery in here. Baptism, we've got a, a Buddhist monk, and um, we've got some kind of like Mexican um, folklore imagery, and just like all this stuff, so much tradition. Kind of like the Hierophant, kind of not. It's more a mixing of traditions. Frost, not quite snowing, and not quite warm just uh frost on the windows the book says frost is memory the way we wait and look back and all the details are gone now 
just a plain sheet of what you remember most. I always think of, like, when I was growing up, we had really, really difficult winters, and just whenever you woke up and the windows were just completely frosted over, and you just could not see anything outside through the frost. That still happens, obviously, but it was such a wonder to me as a child. Deconsecration. So kind of opposite the um, tradition card that we have, we have a giant bell in the background. We have, I don't know, snow or stars or something in the sky. It really feels like the opposite of the Hierophant, just uh, like not being all-knowing, not really like being there for the answers, just like, we don't know. <laughs> the battle. Okay, so it says water and cancer. We've got a rabbit. We've got a wolf facing each other down. The glory of battle itself. Bone fire. In that book I mentioned of Blood and Bones, I just got to the section where um, they're talking about throwing bones and um, divining from bones. So this feels very apt. And there are some words on the card straight cutlass fire and then a hole um it looks kind of like a sentence down there so i'm gonna have to sit down and read that it's about looking into your eyes in a mirror for at least 29 seconds every day burn away that which keeps one from oneself the night owl is a sideways card and got some purple text on it that thing you already know but won't or can't admit to yourself. It's a harsh wisdom, but a promise that you already have the tools you need to solve the problem. Owls, symbols of wisdom, and the night and, like, the moon illuminating um, and being like, yeah, you, you know, you know, do some shadow work, you know. The Undaunted, a strange fey beastie. It's a fairy. It says it's unabashed self-certainty living as yourself in complete power, unafraid. The empty kind of looks like a moon, an orb that fades into the background. It's newness and it's quiet, and it can be whatever. It's empty. What are you going to fill it with? We have the traitor, someone who's going to backstab you. Watch out. I like that it looks kind of like hermit. Like, it looks like the hermit, but, you know, the hood is pulled back. The performer looks like the Marcel Tarot or something in that similar style. Um, just the performer. It's kind of like the fool, but not. It's kind of like the court jester, which doesn't really have a place in the tarot. Um, the joker in playing cards is really what comes the closest but uh, the jester was so much more than that. We've got that here. So performance, comic relief, putting on a show, um, being all these different people that the show calls for. The thing among reflections, an inkling of something being wrong in what we see, how we perceive the world, something being slightly off. And this is the final tarot card. The book says... When this card comes up in a reading, you can end the reading there without fear. Just stop asking. The curtains are closing on it. And uh, we're done. So that's the main deck. And I know this is a long video. I'm so excited to work with this deck. But we also have a booster pack. It's booster pack number four. Seven more tarot cards. So let's see. The Queen of Ravens. The queen of the murder, leader of the wings. She remembers the evils you've done and the good as well. Rewards and punishments. Person in your life you need to please or fear the wrath of. Ouroboros. I love that this is like Snake from like the old, old computer game. The book actually says, makes me think of the game of Snake, right? When you hit yourself, you lose. It's collision, not infinity. I love that there's snake on it. Also, look at the little creature on the back. It looks like a long tongue coming out, but here is definitely the tail. The storyteller. We seek people to tell us stories about ourselves all the time. Want to be understood by others, but also recognized for what we've done and accomplished. Readers do that. Reading tarot for others is very much like writing a story right then and there with what comes up. So I always see it as a form of storytelling. The Queen of Strays. This 
is me. This is my card. <laughs> the people who just take in others, they become like their adoptive or found family. They can't help it. I take in cats. I can't help it. So, um, I love this. I love this. The alley. The alley man tarot. Imagine. He says this is a personal one. Alleys are where people pass on secret shortcuts. Inside entrances are. The publishing goblin. Um, that's actually the name of the company that this was, um, now put through. It's a goblin and they have typewriters and they're just like surrounded by typewriters and they just keep on writing keep on writing gotta get that work done lightning in a bottle Ooh! last year i was playing a game called spirit fear where one of the little mini games um is to catch lightning in a bottle and it's so much fun this says this is the card of when things happen at the right place in time and just soar and light up the sky things that just come together right and explode in brilliance and here's another lightning in a bottle card so two of them so that's the booster pack that i have i did look through this book as i was reading especially these extra cards but there's this whole um section in here that's just uh about the deck and how to read with it i I wish I had that star card. Um, yeah, so this has all the extra cards, and I'm going to have to look at them. It's from the Over the Garden Wall Tarot deck. Look at that Knight of Swords. I love it. Okay, okay. I kind of wish I had gotten booster packs, honestly, but the devil with snakes for dicks. <laughs> Imagine being this fine with having your junk out, and also your junk is several snakes. <laughs> I want those booster packs now. I'm excited for this. The write-ups are really nice from what I've already looked at. Some personal stories and some personal interpretations, but just like also general interpretations about these specific cards. I'm so excited. I'm also like really excited that it's like an actual book. Like I only have one no, I have two other decks that come with, like, actual books. One is the Starman Tarot, and one is the Everyday Witch Tarot. So I'm excited for this. And I also pre-ordered, or backed on Kickstarter, another deck called the Literary Tarot that I did get the full book for that one, too. So I'll have four. But I'm so excited for these. Like, look, look at those gilded edges. But I'm so excited for these cards also i'm not going to shuffle them because i do want to do like the flip through in order for another video but they just feel like standard um high quality tarot cards they feel like they're going to shuffle really well i'm not so concerned about like having to shuffle so many at once i'm really not concerned about that because it's honestly kind of the same thickness as my last unicorn deck because those cards are really thick and stiff so um, i'm not so worried about that but i'm excited to start working with it so i'll try to do an update in a few months on working with this deck in the meantime thank you for watching and did you get this deck if you watched this whole thing, what was your favorite card that you saw? Or what are you most intrigued by? I am really excited to start working with it. So I'm going to go do that. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, I do a lot of tarot unboxings and reviews. So subscribe if you want to see more of that. If you like this video in particular, a like and a comment go such a long way in helping the channel grow. If you want to see more of whatever I do on the internet, all my social links are down below. I have a Twitter, I stream tarot on Twitch, and I'm kind of all over the other places on the internet. So those links are all down below. Thank you for watching. Have a wonderful, magical day.